All right, folks, welcome to another Hickory Hacker course vlog. This week I'm in Sarasota, Florida at Sarah Bay Country Club playing in the inaugural Florida Hickory Open. Florida Hickory Open is organized by the Florida State Golf Association, and this year it was played on a pretty tough golf course. Stint meter said 11.2, but the greens were running faster than that, and that's thanks to this man, Donald Ross, who designed this course in 1925. The course opened in 1926 as Whitfield Estates Country Club, and it's steeped in golf history thanks to its close association with Bobby Jones, who played winter golf here and took on Walter Hagen in February 1926 in the match of the century. The first 36 holes were played here, followed by another 36 at Hagen's home course in St. Petersburg. Hagen won the match handily, and the publicity around the event helped make golf even more popular in this country. So here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stewart and Jacoby. I'm using my primary hickory set for this round, which are two replica woods from Louisville Golf, five authentic irons, and my trusty Tom Stewart RTJ putter, and my ball is a Wilson Stab Zip with a custom antique mesh pattern. Here's a scorecard for the front. We're playing the gold tees most of the time here with a couple silver tees mixed in. First hole's a pretty straightforward par four, 379 yards. Here are my playing partners, Peter Harrington, who's a longtime hickory golfer. And then Dr. Howard Van Nostren, who's playing hickory clubs for the very first time here. We'll get into his story a little bit later. I'll start things off by pushing it off the tee right. Show your politics, Chris. And Peter was a character, a lot of fun to play with. So this was a practice round for the two-day tournament. We're just trying to get to know the course here. And like a lot of Donald Ross courses, the greens are tricky. Uh, these were crowned, so if you didn't hit it in the right spot, the ball almost always ran off the back, which was frustrating, but it was a good challenge, I thought. I actually like fast greens. I putt better on them, as you see here. And that was a good start. Number two, par four, 330 yards. This one dog legs a little bit right. I was feeling pretty good with my brassy for the most part, but I had just watched Peter hit it right. And, uh, you know, that got stuck in my brain. Like I just watched you do that, and I had to say, get it out of my head? Yeah. Did not get out of my head. So I'm off on the right side. Pretty much my only play here was to use the Tom Stewart Otto Hackbarth 2 iron and punch it back into the fairway, but I just had to get it over that bunker, which I didn't do. So, kind of an awkward stance here, balls beneath my feet. I'm using the mashy, and that was about as good as I could do. Didn't get a lot of distance, but I got it back in the fairway, so kind of took my medicine with that shot. Here I'm using the Otto Hackbarth 2 iron once again. And I hit a little fat. Believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever played golf in Florida, so it actually took me a few holes to get used to the turf and how the clubs interacted with it. Uh, that probably isn't the reason I hit bad shots, <laughs> but uh, it just sounds like a pretty good excuse, so I'll use it. So I skimmed that across the green, and I'm feeling pretty down about this hole, but that's usually when something interesting happens. Here I'm using the Croydon Waffle Face Spade Mashy, and did not see where this ball was heading until I heard the celebration. So not a bad way to wrap up a rough hole. All right, so number three is a short par four, 314 yards. Fairway's choked a little bit in your landing area by some fairway bunkers. That was a pretty decent drive, a little off balance, but I uh, got it out there straight. Left me with a short approach here using the mashy and just pulled it a little bit left of the green. And I actually landed that on the, the left side of the green, but it rolled off the back, uh, which okay. was going to be That's a pretty right. common occurrence the whole weekend. So I'm off the green here using the putter. You might remember uh, my chip in with the putter on number nine at East Potomac Blue. And that putter was trying to do the same thing again. That left me with a tough chip back up using the putter once again. I just didn't find the right line on that one. But overall, I've been, been very pleased lately with how I've been chipping the ball around the green. And that was a tough one. So number four is a short par three, 118 yards. Most of us are using niblicks or mashing niblicks off the tee here. Peter starts things off. 
with a real nice shot. Found the front of the green, but rolled off the back. Oh, nice shot. We were joking about it here, but by uh, the second day of the tournament, we were all pretty frustrated with the shots that looked good and then rolled off the back. This, this nibbling is about a hundred yard court. Uh, I mean, it depends on your ability, but I think you could probably hit that 110, 115. So Howard's still learning how to hit these clubs. He's actually using a uh, rental set of uh, Tadmore replicas. Uh, which are pretty good high quality replicas okay. and um, yeah it was hitting them pretty well I thought. I'm using my Tom Stewart Mashy Niblick here which is about my 110-115 yard club. You must be a professional politician. You can't decide to go it, left or I've right. I've always said I'm moderate. <laughs> I think Peter had a joke for every swing. All right so I'm off the green here on the left side uh, and this was a shot that I got a lot of practice with over the course of the weekend. Just kind of a mashy chip into the front of the green uh, and kind of slow it down with the rough. And I was pretty happy with how that turned out. There was a nice putt by Peter. He actually putts left-handed because he finds more stability with the putter that way, even though he swings everything else right-handed. And here's Howard lining up his first par putt with hickories, and he drops it. There's a par. A nice start for Howard. Howard's actually a really good golfer with uh, modern clubs, and so it didn't take him too long to make the transition to hickories. And I'll let him explain a little bit later in the round how he adapted his modern swing for hickory clubs. I just had a little bit of work here for my par. Yeah, it felt pretty good. That takes us to number five, which is another short par four at 333 yards. But that creek is strategically winding its way through the hole, making this a very tough hole, at least for me. Peter's got the right idea here, staying on the right side of that pretty wide fairway. That gave him a pretty good look at the green. Nice shot. What you didn't want to do here is go left, foreshadowing what's about to happen. straight pull left and uh, ended up bounding it into the water up there. So watched out for the gators, took a drop. And this next shot, I had no idea where I was aiming. I, I just didn't know where the fairway was up there. Thought I had enough room, but I ended up hitting that one into the water too, where the creek comes around the right side. So this hole's pretty much a mess for me. Uh, that was a pretty good shot out of some thick rough over toward the left side of the yeah, green. Right from that, it was a little thick. Here you see kind of the elevated crowned green uh, that Ross is known for on so many of his courses. And uh, I was pleased with how I was approaching these shots, using the ground in front of the green to kind of slow it down so that it wouldn't skate so far past your target. And um, this one went a little further than I wanted, uh, but this, this putt was pretty good. Number six, another short par four at 328 yards. Pretty wide open fairway for your drive. And Howard hit a really nice shot here. And I thought this was a good opportunity to segue into our brief conversation the next day about how he approached hitting the hickories. To me, it's like playing golf with a wet piece of spaghetti. With my swing speed, at my angle of impact, I'm always gonna have the face open and the ball's always gonna go right. So if I slowed my swing down, and I compacted it, the ball face, the club face should be square at impact. Does that negatively impact your distance though because you're compacting your swing in your Oh yes. Opinion? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Where a 54 here. See, they're all right at it. They're all right at yeah. the pin. This is my golf swing that I play with. Let's see if I can actually do it. Again, right at it, and actually with yep. a little draw. Yep. I could find myself playing this game. The interesting part is, if I swing the hickories more and dial up my tempo, how is that gonna change my impact here mm -hmm. and actually make my impact straighter? Yeah. By playing hickory is going to, I see it, lowering my regular handicap because 
I'm not going to be as fast. Right. Yeah. And most of the people when they're playing there, plus they would say I'm swinging out of my shoes. That's why I don't play with shoes. <laughs> but you know, I, I, the smooth, smooth, compact swing. Right. See, I thought Howard had a pretty interesting perspective on how to hit those clubs, especially with uh, the crash course he had uh, basically a day and trying to figure out how to do it. So back to the action here. Not a bad tee shot there, but uh, it did end up finding that bunker. Fortunately, it was a flat lie in there, so I'm using the mashie here. Um, just have to clear the lip, but we've got plenty of room, I think. That was a pretty good shot out of there, I thought. Just up to the front of the green, not quite on. But I'm real comfortable with this shot. And uh, ended up putting this one pretty close as well. really wanted that putt to drop but again can't complain about the putter uh, I've been putting pretty well and, and actually put really well for the tournament too all right it's so number seven par five 442 yards kind of a tight fairway compared to some of the others doesn't look so on the tee but it tightens up after the uh, going into your second shot I went a little further left than I wanted to here ended up finding the trees, but I had some space to punch this back out using the Tom Stewart Auto Hack Bars 2 iron. Didn't put the shot tracer on that one, but it's basically a little punch that skimmed across the fairway over to the right side. So here I figured I'd try the Dysert Spalding Jigger for the first time this round. If you've watched my course vlogs, you know I've got a love-hate thing going on with this club, and <laughs> that was definitely one of the shots that makes me hate it. So I figure I go back to the Tom Stewart 2 iron, try to ride the ship. And I just tried to hit that too hard. Saw the creek up there and was trying to make sure I'd get it over it and ended up hitting it into the creek. So taking a drop, using the mashie. And I just can't do anything right on this hole all of a sudden. Yeah, that's just what happens to me sometimes. Um, you know, you, you have to forget the last bad shot, and I have a hard time doing that sometimes, and then you try to do more with the next shot than you should. Um, but finally on the dance floor here, feeling comfortable with the putter. It took a lot of time reading this putt, though, and uh, obviously still didn't help because I put that way further left than I needed to. Howard and Peter were very patient with me on this hole as I slowly plotted my way to the finish and uh, couldn't even get that one to drop. All right, number eight, par three, 156 yards. All three of us ended up putting our first tee shots into the creek here. So these were, these were all our third shots. Howard finally had a good one. Came up a little short of the green there, but bounced up. I was kind of in between clubs, so I used the mashie and hit it too hard again. I was fortunate to get it that far. No, that felt, that actually hurt. Hit that in the wrong yeah, spot. Yeah, it just not, it did not feel good. So I'm over on the left side here using the mashie. Kind of a tricky, short-sided pin there. And I got a bad bounce right in front of the green, so that ended up scooting off toward, you know, pretty much off the back of the green. I didn't get a good camera angle here on this one, but you'll see my ball scooting in here. I was using the putter off the green. I missed the next putt, so uh, this is actually my, f my third putt. And that was a pretty good read. All right, so heading home, big dog leg right, number nine is par four, 423 yards. A lot of room on the left, and that's where Peter ended up. Very nice. That's actually a good angle, too, for your second shot. You've got another creek to navigate up here that you'll see in a moment. 
a decent swing, but I got under it a little bit too much and uh, popped it up. Went straight though, and so I got, you know, I'm in the middle of the fairway. But I'm pretty far out. I'm not using the Louisville Golf 21 degree Jack White spoon, which um, would be the club for this distance. I just didn't trust it. And I uh, ended up putting myself just short of the creek, so not too bad. Using the Tom Stewart 2 iron here, and I'm setting up to try to hit a draw. Uh, probably not the best idea, but I can pull that shot off every once in a while. This time, though, ended up just pushing it straight right and uh, bounded it into some bushes over on the right side here. I had to punch out to get a clearer shot, and this is my next shot after that. And, of course, I ended up chipping it into the bunker. But that's a good opportunity to show you my new sand game, my improved sand game, with the Croydon Waffle Face Spade Mashy. I kind of like these bunker blasts where I have to get it over the lip fast. I'm actually better at those than I am when the, when the ball's in the middle of the bunker. I don't, I don't know why that is, but anyway, happy to get out of the bunker in one shot. And here I'm pitching back up on the green with the putter. That one went a little further than I wanted. I thought this was kind of a tricky pin. Or I'm just a bad putter here. One of the two. <laughs> so as I try real hard to wrap up this front nine, I want to thank you for watching. And uh, tune in next week for the back nine here at Sarah Bay Country Club. In the meantime, check out my first round from the Massachusetts Hickory Open at Country Club of Greenfield in the upper right. And then below that, learn how you can check loft and swing weight without a scale or gauge. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week. Please like and subscribe.